like if you take a king from history and they have like this ungodly amount of wealth and they can control vast lands and peoples mm -hmm. they don't have an iphone or air conditioning mm -hmm. i can let my water run for five days all i got to do is pay more money people die for clean water even today yeah i think we all need to be really more grateful in this world i just want to be funny and be on stage i don't want the stress of having to produce a show I having to mean, sell man. tickets having to book comics having to pay the comics having to do lights having to do sounds i, I just want to be on stage and be funny for 10 minutes and then get off and get paid i think you have to grind to get there so who are your comedy influences who do you like in this world let's name Do some I names like welcome everyone to the og pod today i have daniel west how's everybody doing tonight oh we're doing good dude uh so daniel is the host with jordan mcdonald yeah. of the two pack two, uh, two nap two nap sorry yeah. uh podcast and a comic here in austin yeah yeah two and ap you can find us on instagram at two nap show uh it's a very fun podcast i do with a fellow comic and we just have fun talking uh can I curse? Oh, of course. Okay, we just talk shit. It's preferred. Uh, okay, yeah. bad, bad. In the first 30 seconds. We always have to get one in the first 30 seconds. Bad, 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 bad. Did we make it? I think so. I think yeah. so. Uh, yeah, we just talk shit, have fun. Uh, two black comics, uh, you know, just having fun in this white city. Is it a white city? Yeah, it's a, it's a very extremely white city. Yeah. I feel like I'm always in white cities. I came from Salt Lake City. Yeah. That's like the whitest <laughs> yeah. city ever. Yeah, Utah. It's, it's, the the Salt like, Flats, they call it. Yeah, it seems like white capital. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's the white capital yeah yeah what do you find like is, is there any difference between white and black out here um like, like is there any the white people and yeah, black people out here? like is there any division or um well it's i don't i don't want to talk mess about the black people out here but it's yeah. it's hard to find them uh, a <laughs> okay. lot of the times but you know the ones you do see uh is i mean it's always asians are kind of hard to find out here there's not a ton of Asians. Really? I don't no, know. I, Do you know I, I, yeah, I, I think I see a fair amount. Like, I mean, they have their like sections that they hang out in. But uh, like, as far as like the black people here, it's always interesting being black and meeting new black people in a white city because you end up with like two different types of of like interactions. It's either one the yes, finally I'm another one of me. Like, let's go hang out and be friends and everything, which is always great, and I love that. And then the other interaction is the, ooh, he's going to try and take my white people away from me. And it's like, ah, uh, that's not the... Uh, what is that yeah. about? Well, I mean, it's like the 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 token type of thing, like the token black friend. Is it's that a like, thing? You always hear that. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a, that's definitely a thing. Uh, like, I used, yeah. to, I used to do theater. So, I, again, I would be in a lot of, like, white spaces. Uh, and uh, one time I auditioned for Shrek the Musical. Uh, I auditioned for the part. Well, I, it was a general audition. There were you weren't really auditioning for roles, but I wanted to be Donkey, of course. Oh yeah, right. And, and, and oh yeah, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, I did. I had a great audition, sung very well. And then as I'm in line to get on stage for the reading in front of everybody, in walks uh, the, other, the only other black dude to do the audition, and I can tell everybody knows him because as soon as he walks in, hey. And he's dapping up everybody and everybody's hugging and everything. And then he sees me and his whole demeanor changes. Oh, he's competition. Like, Who the fuck is that? Competition. Yeah, exactly. And then I get up there, I sing really well. And he's just like, I can do better than that. And then he gets up there and I kid you not, he sings his whole thing like as Donkey would like, in Donkey mannerisms, but he's doing it to me. And not not the judges doing the uh, casting and everything, not the people. No, uh, he's but doing to it directly me. to he's you. He's just like, no, you're not taking my spot. This is my area. These are my white folks. That no, they get out of here. Dude, that's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, and it's just yeah, it's just the interesting interaction. I don't and I don't know why. I mean, I get why they do that. It's just they they want to protect their spot just in case I'm cooler than he is in their eyes. But people it's, like play such weird status games. Yeah, but yeah. it's important, I guess. You know, status positions you for opportunity and yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's doing great right now. And neither one of us got cast as donkey. They cast some <laughs> other dude. So it was like, any, can we hear a donkey? Black. We'll both let's both do one. Let's donkey? do. I'm making waffles. <laughs> That's uh, my best. Oh, uh, what's the what was the Shrek. what was the uh, Shrek. Uh, oh uh, shit i can't do it uh, maybe I'm, if you do it, i can do i'm it. making waffles uh, i just i just you gotta, gotta do an eddie murphy impression uh uh yeah how do you boot up eddie murphy that's hard <laughs> to do that impression uh i don't know i don't, I don't know is anything. he still doing comedy no no he just released the movie though oh yeah what yeah, was in it was uh it's like a guess who's coming to dinner remake it's called you people 
again like a black and white thing. It's he, dude. Dude, I don't. I gotta give her to this yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Let me yeah, give her. Yeah. Okay, rolling, rolling, rolling. We we're talking about Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah. So you just did a, a movie called You People, and uh, it's 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 like a guess who's coming to dinner, like a, a black family and a white family. Their kids uh, want to get married, and then they have to interact with each other. But they're but they're white and black, so they have to deal with that race issue. And I mean, the movie is fine. I love Eddie Murphy. Uh, uh, Lauren London is in it. She's fantastic. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus is in it. Um, but it's just a movie of awkward interactions. The way it's written is just like, how can we get the most awkwardness out of it? Not only are they white and black, but the white family is Jewish and the black family is Muslim. So it's just like even more tension there. It's like, God damn, this is. They were going for awkward. <laughs> yeah, like extremely awkward. Every interaction in the movie, there's not a single like, like a, a fu- like, I don't even want to say funny moment. All the moments are just awkwardness. It's just... You think there's something to that though? Like what is that cringy uh, appeal? I mean, and people I guess, will watch a car accident, right? Yeah, like, I, I guess that's what it is. People want the the car accident in this, but like, this is this is also the movie that that's coming out after the the Kanye Jewish incident, the Kyrie Irving Jewish incident. So it's like, okay, can you explain the Kyrie Irving thing? Because I all I know about him is he's a NBA player. Okay, NBA player, very like outspoken about certain issues, especially dealing with black people, but. Uh, mm-hmm. He he's basically uh, posted a picture of a documentary on his Instagram uh, that was a uh, it was called from uh, Negroes to Hebrews or Hebrews or something like that, and it was basically uh, talking about how black people are actually the lost children of Israel and is going down that whole rabbit hole, the whole of that. And and whether you believe that I or gotta not, got to learn more about that. Yeah, yeah, whether you believe that or not, uh, there were sections in the documentary that like were completely not true. Like they denied the Holocaust and, oh, and shit. people were really like hounding Hikari about that. And he didn't, he didn't outright say that uh, he endorsed these things, but he just posted a link to, he, he didn't post a link. He just posted the, the picture of the screenshot of, of this movie. And that was it. No context. And people just flew with it. Unloaded like the, on him. the, uh, the anti defamation league, like made a list of rules he had to come up with. He's like, you got to pay money. You got to say, you're sorry. They got a you league. Gotta, you got to do all this stuff. League. And which is crazy. Is like, Avengers. Like, which, what is that? And which is crazy. Cause Jerry Jones had that picture come out of him. Like, uh, uh, at the when when the, the schools were segregated and there were white people like yelling at the black kids coming to the the new segregated schools. There's a picture like of in Jerry the 60s Jones. Or, yeah. oh. There's a picture of Jerry Jones as a teenager in the on the wrong side of history at that point. Whoa. Like with the behind the white dude yelling at the little black girl, and it's like, well, where is his list of demands that he's got to apologize and then, or something? Like I, if I was. If I was, I don't know who that is. He's a white guy. Uh, the presumed? owner of the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, yeah. Well, so it already sounds a little racist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like, if he's the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, who are these other white dudes? Like seven, twelve white dudes in this picture. Like, if he's the owner of the Cowboys, then all these other dudes are somebody else, right? This guy's a judge. This guy's a lawyer. So if I'm Jerry, if I'm somebody that's in a league that's trying to get something out of Jerry Jones for this, I would go, you got to name every single one of these white dudes in there. We got to find out who they are or yeah. we're not supporting the Cowboys anymore or something like that. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. Where do you think all this stuff ends up? Like, I don't know. So much of racism to me, honestly, seems like sports where people just want to pick a team and a side. Like, yeah. how can anyone deny that we're all just animals? Yeah. We're all are just, you know, monkeys for real. Like, what else Like, would it be? We can, we're the only things in the universe, as far as we can tell, that can even talk, right? Yeah. What else can even talk? So obviously we're the same thing, but people like to take these sides and they like to say like, yeah, my is, team is better than your team. It, I mean, it's, it's the, it's a going back to history. just the way we've been I think it's fear. I think it's all, all fear. People are afraid of what they don't understand. And, yeah. but then also I feel like white people like to adopt black culture a little bit. Oh, of course. You know, yeah. like the, the entire world, at likes least to in adapt. America, like there's, there's well, what, what is that? Why the, those Korean pop groups are trying to do like they're black, trying to be rappers. Yeah. Like they, the girls have their like hair braided cool. with the dark tans. I'm like, what's going on? I don't I don't know. Maybe there's like some fucking I don't know, like if I'll get banned for this, but like some spirit of Africa that's like genuinely cooler. I don't know. Maybe people seem to like the culture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's fun. It's just. 
when you when you see a lot of like like uh, let's just say hip hop culture and like you see a, a video of people in a the club, they look like they're having fun. The music's blasting, everybody's enjoying them. So if the Grammys were on well yesterday. Yeah, they Nobody they gets a fuck. yeah they did a they did a fiftieth celebration for hip hop. And it was okay. just at the end of it, they brought out Lil Uzi Vert and LL Cool G and Cool J. And like they had a, a bunch of rappers from all over the years come out at the end. And it was just a bunch of like, it was like a, a celebration. And that was great. And, I and guess then, it's cool. And then you think back to like the first Grammys, they didn't even let it be televised. Like the first, uh, not the first Grammys, but the first time they uh, had the, the best hip hop album or a hip hop category, they didn't even televise it. And now, like, it's like, all right, now we can celebrate it. So it's a... Well, how, where do you think this all, like, um, where do you think race, racial tensions or, like, relations ends up in 50 years, even, in 100 years? Like, is anyone even going to think about it, or is everyone just going to be I think, brown? <laughs> I think... We're probably all just going to be brown. Yeah, I think we'll all just be beige. <laughs> yeah, beige. Yeah, and then it'll, it'll just whatever. be... It'll yeah. just be trying to figure out, like, who's who. Like, what are you... What are you at this point like i think i think you'll still have like small sections of like the pure <laughs> like it might just end up being like we're pure over here we're pure over here and all you, you beige people are just i don't know this was a joke i was always trying to make is like isn't it just like the nastiest growth uh, grossest uh white people that always claim to be supremacists yeah you know like yeah. the the southern just look like they got baked beans for fucking teeth <laughs> baked beans for teeth that's hilarious yeah like those are the guys that are what are you supreme over nacho supreme burger supreme what is supreme about you yeah there's a lot of those guys still alive that's crazy but then there's black supremacy too wasn't like malcolm x or what there was like there's well, been black supremacists I, uh, yes but Malcolm X is I wouldn't consider him a black supremacist. Okay. I don't know and, that much and, about and him. When you consider when you compare him to like white supremacists. Like and and that's the thing like uh like not a lot of people know about Malcolm X which I feel like they should. I just know him as a figure from history yeah, around yeah. the same yeah, time yeah. as MLK. I mean, he, around the same time but like he where MLK was like nonviolence Mal Malcolm X was let's get our justice by any means necessary. Like we're not going to like like his was like like you're not gonna, if Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King was like, let's preach from the Bible, turn the other cheek. Where Malcolm X was like, I'm I'm Muslim, and so I'm not gonna turn my other cheek. If you're gonna hit me, I'm gonna hit you back. And that's what his message towards black people was like: stand up for yourself. Yeah, stand up for ourselves. Let's yeah. come together. Let's not let's not sit here and be silent. Let's not be nonviolent. If they're violent with us, let's be violent back. And the reason his message gets muddled is because. He was a Muslim with the Nation of Islam, and then there was like a a a, a big uh, internal thing with them, to where when his when he died, it's unclear whether it was the Nation of Islam that did it or whether was it he was murdered? Police, yeah, he was murdered. Whoa, shit. Yeah, yeah. So it was unclear whether it was like the his own people that did it or whether it was the police and the normal group of probably white. the police. Yeah, staging I mean it's it definitely them. His but people. they did a good job of making you think it was the nation. Like it was the. They did a whole movie about it. it was, they didn't Epstein it. Yeah, like yeah. Epstein was so lazy. We're going to turn off the cameras. Yeah. You know, like he's going to have strangulation marks on his neck or whatever. I, I still don't understand how we don't know the people involved in all that. I think that we could know that people just aren't interested. They don't want to know. Like it would be so, like, here's what you do. Just don't stop talking about it until you get the name of all the guards that were supposed to be there. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just talking. About, I'm not even talking about like the, his suicide. I'm talking about like the island stuff. Like like this, the girl that was with him, I don't know if Gislaine. she's dead or if she's in jail now. Unfortunate but, name. But she's been convicted. Gislaine. Yeah, Come She's on. been convicted, and we don't even know the, the people that were on this island, all these celebrities and powerful people that I feel like we should know. We probably should, but like I feel like when people get really powerful, one of the things that they do is they broker secrets to control others. Yeah. So they'll get yeah. some shit on you, and then that's how they control you. And I think a lot of that Epstein Island was like, who knows what the people went and did on that island. I'm mm -hmm. sure like there was some like terrible things happening. Absolutely. But no, also I was just it was playing go fish. Yeah, they, we were just playing, <laughs> yeah. It was just board game nights, guys. Like we were just having fun. No, uh, I'm sure some depraved and horrendous shit happened. But I don't think every single person that went to the island who did that i think that epstein was one of these power brokers and he was like a secret keeper mm -hmm. and gathering secrets on people and using that to influence and yeah and um, also i mean there's a 
there's like the they, they released like a flight log which had like a list of a bunch of celebrities that ever flew on this plane oh yeah but okay they, so we got they also idea. failed to mention that uh epstein and bill cosby did like a live aid uh, africa tour where they had a bunch of like celebrities and uh, musicians fly out to Africa to raise awareness for AIDS in 2002 or whatever. And like all on that list of celebrities are like celebrities that were big in 2002, like Beyonce, Will Smith, like there's like all, and so it was like, okay, so did they go on his plane, but did they fly to the island? Were they just uh, a celebrity to get on this tour? Like what was this for? What was this for? I don't know. I think like high society has all these social games and you get social lights where their whole job and expertise yeah. is how do I navigate and maintain these relationships? Yeah. How do I get this? I'll get that guy to go to the party and then I can tell other people he's coming, that kind of shit. Yeah. But Bill Cosby's back on tour. We were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he's trying to go back. So out he's out tour. of jail. First of all, out of jail, which is wild. Yeah. How old crazy. is he? Do he's, we know? At least 80. He's got to be at 80s, least 80. Yeah. Right? And he's blind. He's blind? Yeah. He's some type of like thing. What do you think that blind. guy's life has got to be? Like, have you, have you ever seen, like, oh, okay, so I, I went to one of the last shows of his before he got canceled. I took a girl out, and after he, like, two weeks later, the, uh, all the allegations came out, and then she never talked to me again. <laughs> but it was like one of the best shows ever because he's one of yeah. the greatest storytellers ever. Yeah. And now that he's out and trying to go back on tour, part of me is like, I, I, this is wrong, whatever. But also part of me is like, I got to finish the, the show, right? <laughs> I got to finish the series. I got to, I got to, I got to know what he's talking about because I just watched Oz. Have you ever seen that show? No. Oz is like, it's HBO. Uh, it's one of their first TV shows that ever like popped off, like before The Sopranos. Yeah, I've was heard of it, Oz. Yeah, but it was like, it was about, uh, have you ever seen Orange is the New Black? It's like the yeah. male version of that. It's oh, men, cool. men like in prison, prison, right? Okay. I want to see a version of that, but with Cosby That'd as be the dude show. in the wheelchair narrating everything, right? That would be fucking Just hilarious. Just tell his story. Yeah, just like, oh, I had to be <laughs> over there. Stay away from him. Like, that would be fucking hilarious. Uh, the only word that comes to mind is pudding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, save me a pudding pop, please. Yeah. But he is like a great storyteller, a great comic, and yeah. he's revered in that role. Um, I don't know. Like... If also he's 80 is rapist. he really going to be doing anything like i don't think he's that much of a danger to society yeah but it's also like a matter of Was if justice if, served yeah justice served like uh, if 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 half of these things are true, if if let's say a third of these allegations well he's got to live with it like you know and I, he's blind I think he's living with it fine he's like yeah richest he's like almost <laughs> yeah, a maybe billionaire. He's okay is he yeah uh, yeah he's like one of the richest black people ever like he's living with it fine but like damn like if a third of those allegations are true, that's still like 15 plus women that that he allegedly raped and drugged. You would think that he would be so satisfied just by the opportunities afforded by fame and money yeah. and, yeah. you know, his career or whatever, that he wouldn't need to do that kind of stuff. But you find people and they just have these weird sexual kinks yeah. that like it satisfies them in it's a way a that they can't find in a normal relationship. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. And like, the, like it's crazy. All that shit come out, and then you see like interviews of Cosby. Like, uh, like there was one where he like guest hosted David Letterman, and Sofia Vergara was on, and he's the whole time she's, you know, Sofia Vergara from Modern Family, the oh yeah, Latina with like the big oh yeah, she's titty, gorgeous. Oh my god. And then he's so he's guest hosting, and she's one of the guests. And then the whole time he's just having to feel the oh look at her, <laughs> I'm gonna slip her. Yeah, was, oh my god! And Fuck, like I he, can't do his impression. There was like interviews of him talking about like uh, Spanish Fly with David Letterman, which is the drug that you used to drug people back in the day. And he was like, "You remember Spanish Fly? Oh, they tell you just the tip of a pen would oh, slip my. it in. It's like, oh, oh dude, you just snitching wait. On he was like d making jokes about it. Yeah, yeah. Holy well, because like. Spanish fly back in the day. This is this is what the defenders say about Cosby. It was like everybody was they doing that shit, just slipping, you know, and back in Slip the day, they just wake up, they just partying, and it was like, yeah, but nah, dude, that's not. <laughs> everybody was doing it, so yeah, everybody should probably go to jail then, dude. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, that's one of the things that's happening uh, in this connected world of technology is we're discovering just how depraved everyone is. Yeah. And I think one of these things I've heard, uh, I think I first heard this idea on Joe Rogan's podcast, is talking about how in the future, 
it'll be really difficult to lie and everyone will know everything because those chips that you're trying to put in. Your yeah. Brain. They wanted the yeah. Neuralinks. But I think if that was true and we could really have some way to read each other's minds, mm -hmm. it would take about five seconds to realize like, Oh, we're all kind of crazy. Like yeah. no, there isn't like some paragon of wisdom. There's not like some like perfect person. Everyone has their shit and their past and their history. And there is no like, everyone's like a little weird. Everyone has kinks. And we all just like build this persona mm. that we represent ourselves with. Like I, I like to think of it as like a character, you know, that that you put on or whatever. And, I, you know, you, you dress it the way you want. Mm. You present it the way you want. And it's fun. But that's not the totality of you. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a multiplicity. You have many different competing desires and drives and motivations. I, I also feel like if like that microchip thing is something that's going to be like way down the road, way down the road yeah, because decades. we, we got to get past the, I think the, so I'm not putting that in my body. Like, the, like that, that group of people first. And then like, I think eventually people will be okay with it and it won't be as a problem because we'll just start going, okay, if I got to, if, if we're going towards the chip, let me just start teaching my kids to not lie. And then eventually we'll just, get to a point where everybody's just, you know, I guess honest with each other and, and we won't have to have these deep, dark secrets to the point where, well, yeah, I'll put a chip in. I got to die. Well, the problem with like a deep, dark secret is it just like haunts you and yeah, weighs yeah. over you. But I mean, at that point, you know, the, the debt generation will be dead. Like I'm, I'm going like the generational. Okay. But what if like they invent like some kind of circuit thing, like some kind of like head lace, I don't know. It looks cool. Mm -hmm. It can read your brain. Like it's kind of like a hat. I don't know. Oh, but you can take it off anytime. But you can take it yeah, off yeah. anytime. All right, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like what if it wasn't so invasive? I don't know. I just I just think the the idea of like being able to to just read somebody's mind is just overkill. I think we're gonna get there though, because the brain is electrical impulses and computers run off that shit. Yeah. So like why can't we like find some way to tap in directly to interface with the brain? It would be pretty ideal if you could think something and get the answer immediately. Yeah. That that would be. We're so much closer with like Chat GPT. Have you played with that yet? I've I've. How what is it? It's like an AI. It's like a new AI speech model. Okay. Um, and it's uh basically been trained on a ton of data, and it uses like this new algorithm called a mm. transformer. Whatever technical mumbo jumbo. I don't yeah. understand any of it, but. The results are crazy. They're crazy. Like you can ask it anything about anything. And it will just. It has a lot of misinformation. But if you know a little bit about what you're asking it about, you can challenge it. And mm -hmm. you can ask it to refine the information. And it'll generate better results. You can basically prompt it into accuracy. And is this people doing this for fun? Or is it like a, a Oh, it's going to be a real it? business. Oh, I mean, it's going to. A lot of people think that it's going to compete with Google. or Oh, even, meaning like just a, a like search it, engine. Yeah. So like if you have a question, you go to Google, right? Yeah. And then I'd search for forever trying to find an answer, but this will be like, yeah. Click, 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 read a bunch of documents. There's the answer. This you ask directly and it gives you the result immediately. Okay. That, that might, okay. Yeah. I think Google's, you know, probably just going to make their own version since I think 100%. they invented Transformers to begin with. Yeah. So like, I think OpenAI copied Google. If also, not, they'll just probably buy it. Or whatever. Well, so Microsoft, this is interesting. Microsoft owns, I think, 49% of OpenAI, mm. which is a crazy deal. They'd made a one billion dollar investment a couple of years ago it's, but isn't that just like syria and alexa it is what though they should have always been okay like syria and alexa are pointless siri is the worst technology i've ever seen in my life yeah. it barely works ask siri to set a timer yeah. oh, i can't unlock your phone yeah. it's bullshit yeah. Like, I just have fun. I'll be like, Siri, tell me a story. And then like sometimes she'll be like, not right now. Or sometimes she'll be like a bitch. long ass <laughs> paragraph of some nanotech shit. I'm like, yo. Yeah. No, Sir Siri is bullshit. It's the worst thing Apple has ever made. Yeah. Worst product you they've ever come Tim out Cook? with. Hear that? <laughs> yeah. Fix your shit. I use Siri uh, when it was still a private company. Mm -hmm. And you could ask it like these really interesting queries. And it worked better than it does today. Mm. That was over a decade ago. They mm. just, they don't care. It's like an abandoned product. And so it's just been like, well, oh, okay, now we got Siri. <laughs> so you talking shit, yo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I should be careful. Like they're recording everything. The AI overlords oh, yeah. are going to like yeah. look back in time or whatever. But no, it's what, uh, it's what it should be. It's what Siri should be. Yeah. Uh, but okay. So hopping back to Cosby. Uh -huh. So what the fuck is that guy's life? He went and he <laughs> did a bunch of 
shit. Yeah. Like for all of these years, I yeah. guess he was drugging people. Maybe it was culturally in at the time, like more normalized, but now he's out saying jokes. I would like to, I'd go to a show. I want to see what he has to say. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your experience. And, and just, I, I want to see the type of people that are, that are going to be in the crowd too. Like that would be interesting. Like I, like I'm, I'm interested to see. It's the, all his, Mexican. I'm interested to see. <laughs> a his preponderance of Mexicans. <laughs> yeah. He has a, a great French audience. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, I just want to see his demographic now. Like who's, who's going to go to a Cosby show. Is it people like me? that are just like looking around just like, Oh, <laughs> please don't recognize me. Or is like, I don't know. That'd be interesting to uh, experiment to figure out. He deserves to get canceled. There's people like Louis C.K. I never thought he deserved any degree of cancel. Like, what did he do? He like asked somebody if could he could jack off in front of him, and they yeah. didn't say no. I mean, that one annoys me. It annoys me. So they say like you should have so much. He has so much power and influence. It's, okay, so that person has no will of their own. They're just a machine. That makes that other person so weak. It yeah. makes them such a, a an automaton. Like they just have to bend to his magnificent will. Oh my God! What do you I, have? Zero ability within yourself. I don't. I don't think Louis was canceled like Cosby. I just think people. I just think people were just overly talking about it, and I don't necessarily. But what is the worst thing he did? I mean, as a, I don't. I don't want somebody to start jacking off in front of me, right? But if they ask you, like, <laughs> and I still don't want, like, even if you, even if, but even, if he, if she said no and he still did it, that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Did she say no? I, I pretty sure she said no I, okay I don't, well that's I don't know. totally different i don't know i that's wasn't totally there different. i don't i don't know if she said no or not i just know he his whole defense was i asked and I i'm asked. like i don't think that's enough <laughs> and i i, I don't, I don't know. he didn't he didn't know. necessarily rape him or anything but just just as a dude stop being fucking sexually it's creepy, creepy. Yeah. like but that's its own punishment its own punishment is like being creepy yeah i mean i don't i mean he He's doing fine. He just sold out Madison Square oh, he's Garden. Doing fine. He's he's doing fine. Yeah. Like it, it's other people that got canceled and are really doing. Like Harvey Weinstein is. Out well, of that's here. a that's good great. one. Yeah, Britt Radner, the all the all those directors and assholes from Hollywood, they're out of there. And but, he, but even take more. like the Weinstein's. Like if somebody came to me and they were like, "Hey, we'll pay you fifteen million, make you a star. You'll have infinite opportunities, and your life is going to be cake after this. All you got to do is wrestle around on the ground with Henrietta Weinstein." for 30 minutes well sure <laughs> like a kind of sure thank you actually for the opportunity i appreciate that yeah, but that's for real. that's that's different for, for you as a guy i for guess us as a guy i'll, I'll and, I and, and look <laughs> we, we must have different we minds will, we will fuck a troll yeah for, for the spotlight just so why like, not why not we have no respect for I've, our penises well i've just done nothing <laughs> like i've already done worse right like yeah well we have no respect for our penises yeah i'll give it up but it's not even about beast. it's not even about that it's more just like men will drip their ball sweat in each other's mouth during jujitsu practice is it really going to be worse than that it's not going to be worse than that maybe not. just going to taste a little salt but but as a as a woman it it is it is i could see the perspective because you don't want to like um yeah like i don't know because yeah because you get into you get into the conversation of like their bodies and like now now like it's different for us because i don't i don't have a vagina i have a penis i'll stick it you know, anywhere I want. Right. But the problem is if you have a vagina, you got to be cautious about what goes in there. Yeah. And, like one is like attacking. And from what I've heard, like defending. Harvey Weinstein had like a, a, some deformity or some shit like that with his, like, like he, he was just, I mean, a he's gross a gross individual. guy yeah. and everything he did was disgusting. But like, I still just like wonder, like people can't say no, like, I don't know. I mean, I I'm sure people really did say hard. no. And then they never got to work ever again. In See, Hollywood. that's what's fucking bad. And, that and, is what's bad. And, is yeah, like, if you the, say no, you get blacklisted yeah. or whatever. Apparently we can't then, say that now. Blacklisted is bad. And then like, even if you say yes, do you got to keep doing it or like what like okay that's true yeah my, so like in my a, fantasy it's zero repercussions for saying no and a one-time 30-minute bout for saying yes and it's it's like deeper than that dude yeah like, but even is. even with the henrietta weinstein let's say let's say all right you do that one time and then she comes back let's do it again are you gonna keep doing it if she if, wants to? If she or gets it... the deal, you know, another okay. fifteen mil. All right, that's you. But yeah, at one point, I'm gonna be like those fifteen mils one at a time. <laughs> at one point, I'm gonna be like, yo, I gotta, <laughs> I want to stop. Yeah, maybe at like five hundred mil, I'd be like, all right, that's good enough. But like, all right, well, okay, but it's like, 
you stop, then all that shit comes with me. Like you got to keep going for it. Well, yeah. Like if there's some expectation that you're supposed to fuck that goblin forever. Okay. Cause, cause it's that. not like people in Hollywood make one movie and then they're set for life. See, I think that is the real power or uh, problem with Weinstein was his power and influence. Yeah. And if, uh, you get banned from making movies because you denied his advances, which probably is the reality of what yeah, happened, yeah. then he should be in jail. Absolutely. And that is like a total abuse of power. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of dudes that he should be in jail like just that. for looking like he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a, I mean, there's a lot of dudes that abuse their power like that, that shouldn't have power. Like yeah. I'm a, I'm a yeah. wrestling fan and uh, I grew up uh, 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 with Vince McMahon is like one of those people that I wanted to meet. And he's like the head CEO of the company, the evil overlord boss on TV. And then this past year, you find out that he's been like paying hush money to a bunch of different women to like for, for like sexual advances of his. And it's just like, damn, dude, like how long why? has he been paying that hush money? For Sounds like, like it didn't work for, for years. Like, it, yeah, exactly. It didn't work. But uh, it, but he paid like over like 20 million dollars to like what? different women. OK, well, that's a lot of cash. Up. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. And, and it's like. As a dude, when are we, when are we as dudes, when are we going to learn that we have uh, when, when we get certain positions, we got to make sure that we don't compromise ourselves at a certain point? Well, the real question people should be asking themselves is like, well, why do you want to drug someone? You know, like, why do you well, get off them or but, in Cosby's case or yeah, in Weinstein? Yeah, yeah. Like, why do you why can't you attract women just based off your status? Like, why do you need to manipulate them into these situations and why does it satisfy you yeah i mean in, it's, in the ways that it does i think people just like are all a little fucked up yeah it's probably just he's probably not satisfied with who he's with and he, he sees a new attractive gwyneth paltrow in the 90s and he's like oh i want he gets off I on the power that. of it Yo, yeah if you, if you want this shakespeare in love you gotta be in love with me and Serious. it's just like damn dude yeah it's the power it's yeah. a power it's a power play yeah i mean like because i mean you if 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 you're at the height of Hollywood in the '90s and you're seeing Selma Hayek and and Cameron Diaz walk by and and you're stuck with your wife that looks like wherever well, she looks well, why wouldn't like. you divorce her then? I mean, you he know? probably did, and but he's still looking at Selma Hayek and Cameron Diaz. The all problem these other is women. he yeah. couldn't actually, in the case of Weinstein, ever attract somebody naturally yeah. in that way. Yeah, and so he's just like, so how, he do I, how else like am I going to do it? Let me use my power. Let me, you want this role? Yeah. On. yeah, but I'm not offended that uh, Cosby is out there at all, even yeah. though he did some depraved shit. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like justice should be served at some point. Like, I don't, I don't feel like he's he got that justice. I mean, he's one of the richest black people ever. He's living fine. I don't. I was talking about this with Gabe about uh, the history of the Kardashians and how it relates to who's the guy that O.J. Simpson kind of mm. got away with murder yeah like did he was justice maybe. served i don't know i don't know maybe yeah, could justice be. definitely wasn't served. i mean they got they but won he was the, in jail for 20 years they won the silver civil uh suit so they got money out of it but also he was in jail for something else well but i think it was like you know they got him on something else and they used that to enforce it for like the yeah, crime but, but even still that's not like he's out today like i mean he's oh well, i guess he would have been out yeah he's on today, twitter but yeah, you might be able to be on hilarious. Twitter in jail. Hello, Twitter world. Do you think world? you could, like, I feel like I could live in jail, you know? Nah, like, if you give me a laptop. Yeah, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to be in jail. Oh, I don't want to be in jail. Yeah, but, I like. I don't I don't even want to. You get a good like, track. Yeah. <laughs> you make sure it's safe. Yeah, but. Uh, give me some, uh, give me a squat cage. I'll be fine. Yeah, no, nah, the the OJ Kardashian things are hilarious. Just. Yeah. Did you, did you watch the TV show or, like. I barely know about him, but I mean, I kind of know about him. They had a connection to my old work. Um, yeah, like the, it does seem that it, this is what Gabe and I were talking about is like the Kardashians like eat men alive. Yeah. They just like the main guy, the Kardashian guy, I think his name was Robert or something. Uh, the brother, yeah. Well, no, like the, the, the guy oh, in the her, OJ yeah, yeah, yeah. trial, Robert, 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 the yeah. lawyer. Um, he died of like a heart attack early. Obviously, uh, Caitlyn Jenner started as Bruce Jenner, yeah. was on the cover of Wheaties, Fucking was like star, yeah. a track star or whatever, like an Olympian, a gold medalist or something. Yeah. And then now he's Caitlyn. But the thing I always think about him, and I, I don't feel that bad picking on him, but like, didn't he make that transition like weeks after involuntary manslaughter? 
Like it seems it like those two he, events have to be connected. Uh, she was Caitlyn when 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 they okay they got into the car accident. Okay, was she? Yeah. yeah. Okay, she boom. already had the surgery by then. Okay, but, uh, well then totally different than I'm um, off base. It was funny. I remember we were watching an episode of the Kardashians where Bruce was uh, uh, had two dogs and and they were always running away. So they were like, "We're gonna get this dog neutered." And he was like, no, you're not going to fucking take my, you're not going to fucking neuter my dog. <laughs> and then they, they they get to the dog to the doctor and he's like, fine, we'll get him neutered. And they're like, yo, you get the fake balls or whatever. And then he like takes the dog and runs away. They're like, where's the dog? Where's the dog? And Bruce runs back to the house. He's drinking coffee. And like years later, he's Caitlin. That's just, that's just that is fucking funny. That's fucking hilarious to me. Yeah. He ended up losing his balls. Um, what do you think is going on? It's a reality TV show. They're creating entertainment. And a lot of like, do you think it's all staged or yeah, is 100%. there a lot? Yeah. I think it's all staged. I think it has to I be. Think, I think they're not. Do you think people, that but. he transitioned as part of the show? Yeah, because I, I, I feel like just up the drama. I, I, I think so. I think it could be like, right. Fuck it. Yeah. Could why be. not? I'm, you know, I, man, why not live? I, mean, I'm, I was a gold medal. Why not? Fucking be a woman now. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I it, mean, they. Uh, she had a fucking TV show at one point. Caitlin? Yeah. It oh, like yeah. A it was like something, like that. something Kate. Yeah. She had it, a talk show. It was a, yeah, it was a, it was a whole season. And then they were like, yeah, this is, this Dude, is, this, this world sucks. is a video game. <laughs> it's a VR world. This is all bullshit. Like, this is seriously like somebody's movie and we're just like NPCs in it. Yeah. I think they forgot that Caitlin was still Bruce at the end of the day and Bruce was like the least interesting person in that family. And it was just like, yeah, changing, changing your gender doesn't make you inter- interesting at all. So yeah, it does make it dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you like? <laughs> just, yeah. How do you spice it up? Yeah. This, this shit is crazy. And then, uh, yeah, I just I just I, I hate that Kanye's going gone crazy now. Yeah. I feel like people are taking advantage of him a little bit. Yeah. Like, I don't think he is a hateful person as much as he spouts no, some hateful no, shit. No, apparently he's the most loving person in the world. <laughs> well, yeah. He I mean, he Hitler. does. Say, yeah, he does. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like, actually, that kind of proves the point. I think the reason he says stuff like that outrageous is because I don't think he I don't know. Maybe he is a hateful person. What do you I don't, think? I don't, I don't think he, I think it is, he's just, just trying to do this overly love thing. Like, like yeah. he did this years ago with the Confederate flag where he put it on a bunch of Confederate flags on his merch. And like some people were like up in arms about it, but he was like, no, I'm trying to do a, a thing where I take the negative and make it a positive. That's his whole thing. He's and an he artist did, He tried to way. do it with a MAGA hat. He tried yeah. to do yeah, it. Yeah, right? He's a and, contrarian. And now he's trying to, and like, now he was like, I'm going to try to do it with Nazi. He, he, uh, <laughs> when he finally got back on Twitter, and uh, Elon was like, Kanye, welcome back. And then he's like, all right, uh, uh, this is right after the Hitler thing. And then he was like, Trump, 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 Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. And he posted a new Yay logo with the Nazi symbol. Yeah. And then Elon was like, all right, dog, I got to take you off now. You can't can't do that. And it's like, well, I, I just don't think he's educated enough to... to yeah, right, to understand to, the impact of yeah, what that means. Means to to people, do. but I also think Elon does take some uh, a little too much joy in being the arbiter of free speech these days. Like, what do you think of his acquisition of Twitter? I, I honestly have no. He's a character about it. in and of himself. Yeah, yeah. I honestly have no. Th- Everybody was up in arms about it. And I was like, I don't think anything's going to happen to this app. Yeah. I mean, than, maybe they'll make some cool new features, but it's pretty. I crazy. mean, they, they've done some features that people were like, "Why are you changing the app?" And it's kind of annoying, but you're yeah. used to it now that you use the app every day. So it's like I don't. Nothing changes about the app. People still use it. They said they were going to log off and never use it again. So what are you going to do? Use Facebook? Yeah. Which is arguably worse. What, what, like, come on. What are we? What are we talking about? At yeah. This point? But yeah, Kanye West. Uh, he's kind of like in some hot water. I don't kind know. Kind of like it. Yeah, no, he's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, do you think he's like, I don't think he's canceled. I don't think, I, I don't think he can be canceled. I think he's muted and he'll be unmuted eventually. No, I, I think, I think people are done with him now. Cause really? Because this last run was where I went, yeah, I'm done. Really? Because, because like before, even before all this, I was like, but what, I wasn't, but why I wasn't making like, excuses, but I was like, um, I was trying to like decipher what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. And then this last run with the Hitler thing, I'm like, this this is dumb, Kanye. Like it, it is dumb. You don't need to do this. And also he he was uh he did the Alex Jones in an interview where he goes, Trump was a top five president in our country. Or he was Trump was top two, second only to Ronald Reagan. 
And I was like, what the fuck? Because there was a line, one of my favorite Kanye songs is Crack Music. And the whole song is him shitting on Ronald Reagan. And I was like, Kanye, I can't listen to you anymore. I think he's a contrarian. I think he just says bullshit yeah. that he doesn't even mean just to like say bullshit. Yeah, but just but just the fact that now he's on Ronald Reagan's side when all these years, one of my favorite songs is him talking about Ronald Reagan was the arbiter of bringing crack into the black community. Does now, he even know who Ronald Reagan is? I doubt he even and, knows yeah, if he's president. Yeah, and that's probably him paired to some other shit some black yeah. person said back in the day yeah. so i'm not now i'm like i can't even take you seriously back then and now so but I can't why even but he's in our like who's taking kanye west seriously just he makes good beats right <laughs> i know? mean but but like as an artist one of the greatest art i mean he's gen generally when it comes to beat making and, and making music he's a genius when it comes to that yeah but outside of that i don't want to hear anything you have to say and right. now i don't even want to hear the music at this point really but, i don't know i can separate the artist from the music pretty easy he, I, 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 I try to, but like, there comes a point like that, that Ronald Reagan line just blew my mind. Cause that's one of my favorite songs. I love that beat. I love it. But like hearing you talk out loud about Ronald Reagan being the best president. Well, why is, is he the, like political at all? Like, why is he doing anything? That's uh, the best thing about comedy okay. is like, everything is a joke. Yeah. Nothing is serious. People just, that take, com that's why it's so hard to cancel a comedian is like, you just know that nothing they say they mean. It's all well, just it's also like hard bullshit. to cancel a comedian because we, I could just go to an open mic and, and I could just go that's true. get a show. Like that's why the Louis thing, he, he can never be canceled because he books his own You tour. just post he where he's going, people buy tickets. Yeah. And if, if you're a fan of Louis' comedy, then people are just going to show up. So Totally. But uh, yeah, like, like I, I think if Kanye would have released new music, he would it would definitely show that people aren't on his side anymore. Really? Yeah, I, I think it. I think it'll definitely like anything. The next thing he decides to drop or do, whether it be music, fashion, whatever the fuck, I think he'll he'll see it in the numbers. Because I think I think him. Yeah, getting I mean, on his no political, doubt he'll have taken a hit. You can't say I love Hitler. Yeah. Oh my god. But I think I think him going on his political run was him watching Trump be so successful at it and going, oh, I'm, I kind of operate like See, this. I think Let the thing, me try to do it exactly the same way. Yeah, and I think the thing that annoyed people about that is that he was presenting himself as like a serious person yeah. and a serious thinker. Yeah, and, and I, just think, I also think he's like, there's something mental going on. Like, I, to, I, I No think, doubt, yeah. no doubt. Like a little bipolar something. Yeah. Like he, Schizophrenic, he put a knows. video online saying, guys, I think I'm autistic. And it's yeah, like, that kind of shit. Uh, maybe I, I think so. Kanye. But even if he like whatever, like whatever his blend is, whatever makes him him, he clearly has some abilities and some talent. And I think where he got lost is just not focusing on what makes him unique and talented mm -hmm. and presenting himself as like some kind of like commentator that people should be listening to. That's well, crazy. That's the thing where uh, you buy into your own bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, a lot of. Especially if everyone like you're the king, you're on top of things, yeah. everything you say, people it, worship. I mean, there's a lot of people, famous people that do that or like whether it be music or movies like like Eminem is one of those guys that like. Uh, back in the day, Eminem was like, you could say he's one of the best rappers ever. Oh, totally. Now he's bought into his own bullshit of I got to be the best rap, like rapidly rap, rap, rapidly rap, rap. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Eminem fan. I, and, and I love Eminem too, but like, it comes to a certain point. It's like, dude, I get it. You you rap, yeah. But you're just, the rap guy. Just make a song, bro. I don't need I don't need you to fit as many bars into one line as you can. Like, hey, dog. But that's kind of his power, like his ability to just like. Brrrp. But but that's the buying into your own bullshit thing. Like that's your own power. But like at at what point are you? I get like, like like a lot of black people say uh, like I don't I don't ride around the car listening to Eminem because it's like yeah I get I get that you're a great rapper but it's like I don't need to hear the lyrical Jesus all the time just give me something I can ride in and jam to not where I'm like holy shit what are the best on? Eminem songs I don't know I like Rap God that's pretty fucking good yeah I mean Rap God is great but it's also like like Rap God was great when he did that that some of them I'm use some yeah. like that's fantastic. Yeah. But after that, like there was a bunch of songs on a bunch of his albums where he would constantly do like it would be like the same type of It would of deal. be like good ver regular verse, regular verse, and that third verse is the Rap God verse. Well, I gotta I gotta do sixteen bars of of a uh, hundred words. How does he move his tongue that second. fast? Well, it's pretty crazy. How does he move his tongue that fast? It's insanity. It's insanity. Yeah. But. 
but he's one of those people. The Rock, I say, he's one of those people that buys into his own bullshit. With really, The Rock? Yeah. What? Have you seen any Rock movies? He's such lately? a positive guy. It, it is. He's. I, I love The Rock. I grew up wrestling. Yeah, I love The fan. Rock. I love him, but like. There was a string of his movies where he he was playing the same character. It was the same. But he's setting. a character. It, like his whole life is a character. Like he's a brand. He's like, uh, yeah, you but, know. But when you when you advertise yourself as a brand and you try to be an actor, I don't want to see any of your movies because I don't want to just see The Rock in every single movie. If you're gonna be really? an actor, be an actor, dude. Be a different. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like I can see both ways. I can see both ways. I can appreciate somebody who's like a really good actor, mm -hmm. and I can appreciate somebody who's built a character. And whatever that is him like he loves to fucking lift weights get jacked yeah. and like play superheroes and he's pretty fucking good at like getting jacked and being a strong guy yeah but like there was that run where he was like it was san andreas it was rampage it was the the one where he was one-legged in a building and it was like all the same you, you could cut different cuts of each movie and it was one, all and i would same. think it was the same movie because it, 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 it all looked the same it sounded the same there was so, really so, nothing but, different but, about but it. does he have to be the world's best actor or no he, he doesn't have to be the so there's like, like exploit versus explore mm -hmm. and exploit is like okay i figured out something i'm really good at and i'm just going to do that again and again and again and again and again yeah explore is like let me just find new terrain let me let me yeah, yeah. And, and for me like as an artist like what point do you expand your horizon right. that's a good question the same thing it's a totally good question again? which is why i like black adam because it, it felt like the first time him kind of stepping out to see of this same old action movie role thing and it, it kind of sucked that it kind of got panned and all of like the i i wouldn't say it got a bunch of negative reviews but it just didn't uh perform like they wanted it to do which is why you shouldn't make a movie for 200 million dollars and expect it to make 600 million dollars you know what i mean yeah, so, uh, yeah. isn't the, the same thing with uh Avatar. Avatar was like really expensive. Yeah, but they made their, their money. Losses. But they they Did were they? also okay. They made their money, but he was like, I I needed to in order for it to make its money, it needs to be the great like the most selling film of all time. Was it? Yeah, it was. It, it, really? I think it eventually ended up uh, hitting the mark. Have you seen it? Is it no, good? No, I, oh, okay. I, I didn't see it. the first movie. Yeah, so, yeah. I I just it didn't really interest me. The Pocahontas too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. It was basically like a like a. a uh, comment on Native American. Uh, I mean, it was American like thing. super the exact same storyline yeah. down to a T. Yeah, but whatever, it's fine. I mean, it was more about like the visual stuff, I guess. Mm. Um, he's he's a pretty interesting guy. He did Titanic, James Cameron. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have like these storytellers and like these really creative people out there that are really good at what they do. Um, I think that if you find something like The Rock, where you just get into a groove of playing the same character. To me, that's not uninteresting, but I can appreciate when you find somebody who's like a really dynamic character yeah. and they can take on any role. Like, who would you say is an actor that kind of fits that bill? That could just do it. Like, yeah, that, um, that that plays like wildly different characters. You want to know who? Well, oh, I'll put it to you like this. Denzel Washington doesn't really step out of his uh, out of his character zone, right? He usually just plays Denzel most of the time. But the movies he selects and the circumstances that he selects with the characters are different. So it's not necessarily, I'm not necessarily. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it, it's like, okay, yeah, there's Denzel, but it's Denzel as a lawyer fighting a dude, uh, fighting for a dude with AIDS. Yeah, it's Denzel, but he's a cop trying to hide his affair with his wife. Yeah, it's Denzel, but he's a gangster, right? So yeah. it's like all these different type of circumstances, but he's also still Denzel. Right. The Rock is the Rock, but all of his circumstances in, the, in his movies are kind of exactly the same. And that's kind of my issue is like it's not necessarily with the Rock. Like, the Rock could be the Rock. Like uh, what was that other movie he did with Kevin Hart? The, uh, uh, the Jumanji. I love that Jumanji movie with the Rock. It was fantastic. He was the Rock, but it was also the circumstances of Jumanji. Right. So I don't know if it's necessarily the Rock that's the problem. Or the movies and and like the scripts that are the problem. But then you do find these really dynamic. I don't know, like okay, so like look at Christian Bale and Christopher Nolan. Mm -hmm. They both have. I think Christian Bale is a very dynamic actor, yeah. and Christopher Nolan is like obviously one of the world's best directors of all time. Yeah. And um, but he he does kind of stick to some themes. And he uses the, even the same actors in his movies. But I like that. I like that he has yeah. the thing. It seems I like mean, he's trying to explore something. He's trying to understand something. He, he, Specifically I, around, obviously, time is a big theme. But. but I don't know if Nolan's movies ever feel the same. Yeah, they do feel 
different, but you kind of have like this, I don't know, part of it is he's always using Hans Zimmer, yeah. except he didn't on this most recent one. Uh, uh, what was it called? Was it the World War One movie? The Reverse Time one. People oh, had mixed Tenet. reviews. Tenet. 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 Yeah, that was. He didn't that. use Hans Zimmer on that one, dude. Hans Zimmer, anything he creates is so freaking good. It yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. What did I just see that he was in? Uh, oh, he did the music for Dune, dude. It's I crazy. Dune oh, you haven't? No, That's I, a pretty good one. I, well, I started watching it. It it felt very slow. It seems like it's a build up. Yeah. Yeah. And to and something. yeah, it just it it felt very slow, and I was like, all right, if I'm gonna watch this, I just need to. Take my time and just whenever I'm ready to watch it. I think I it's was, like three parts, something like that. Yeah. Um, but but anything, any project he's involved in, like he really has an ability to tell stories with music mm. that is unique. Um, but yeah, man, we live in a world with some like serious actors, some serious characters. What, what have you seen everything everywhere all, all at once? I think I have, but I can't remember. With, with the Asian family and she's like, it's a multi universe movie. No, I must have just heard Jamie of it. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. I, I know I've heard it's, of it. It was the best movie I saw last really? year. Really? It, in fact, it's the best movie I've seen in like the That's past. That's not like the end of the world movie where like the world is ending. No, for like no. An, Okay. But it's it's one of the best movies I've seen in the past like 10 years. It's, it's fantastic. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really good. Oh, it's well, so what's good. it about? Um, it's this uh, Chinese family who they own a laundromat and they're having pro- problem with their taxes and and it's a, like a multiverse kind of movie. I, it's so hard to explain. Really? Just Maybe watch I'll it. Check it out. Yeah. It's so good. Like I didn't even know what it was about. I just saw the trailer for it and I was like, "Oh, that looks good." And then I heard everybody go, "It's so good." Like I watched it on Mushrooms. I don't know if you do Mushrooms, but uh, it's, I enjoy it's 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 talking to the mushrooms. It's one of those movies that go well, pairs well really? with Mushrooms. Do you ever uh, feel like when you do Mushrooms like you got to pay a cost first before you get to the good part? I feel like I've never no, tried. Really? I, okay, it's so the, I've the heard pay that the cost part is like in the middle for me right it, okay. it, to me mushrooms you usually go oh this is fantastic 40 minutes of what the fuck and then oh this is fantastic okay for me it's always front loaded where okay. it's like i'm gonna die this is death is like penetrating my bones right now seriously yeah, no, that's how it no, feels for me it's, and then it's, i'm like oh my god i can see the universe <laughs> yeah no for me it's like oh this is the two hours of fun and then like 40 minutes of what's fun. the highest dose you've ever done if you don't mind sharing i i don't i don't really go by doses. i just take a bunch but like i i probably like have you seen like total colors changing warp line, like close mm-hmm. your eyes see the patterns that kind of stuff no i think the most i've ever taken was when i went to go see babylon which just came out it was the new damien chazelle movie mm-hmm. which also was great with mushrooms it's a 1920s warren uh, if, if you if you've seen Singing in the Rain, you will appreciate this that. movie. Singing yeah. in the Rain, oh, Singing in the Rain. Yeah, I guess I, that's all I know of it. <laughs> okay, yeah. but if you've seen that movie, you'll appreciate it. Well, I guess I'm a theater nerd, so I I I, I would have watched it. But uh, uh, that movie's really good, and I saw it on. That's uh, probably the most mushrooms I've taken, and I I, I thought Margot Robbie should have won an Oscar for that. Yeah. Or should have been nominated at least. Do you do any kind of like acting or theater or anything other Uh, than stand up as far as entertainment goes? I haven't done anything in a while. Um, I used to a lot. That's what I like grew up doing is acting. Uh, Do you think it'd be pretty cool though? Because you do get to take on these multiple characters and kind of live multiple lifetimes. Yeah. 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 It's always fun. It's just like uh, uh, getting to perform in front of people and like kind of bring them into this world and and getting like just you know just doing something else for a change but like i i stopped doing it because i got tired of like i was doing a bunch of shows that i didn't care about and the scripts were bad and you got to st- stick to the script and and see that would i think annoy me is yeah, sticking to the script and, and like it's comedy if if it's if the script is bad i can change it because yeah, i'm i'm right. the writer so like that's one it's reason a one-man I love show it. yeah but uh and, and it, it also like an acting you have to rely on everybody else and stand up i can just rely on myself it's just all yeah. up to me so um, I think that is a big appeal of stand up for yeah. me as well is like um, you get to not even stand up just like the idea of well no it is stand up mm-hmm. how many other things can you do where you even have the chance to be a rock star with your voice yeah being a rock star I mean like that's being it being a musician yeah, <laughs> yeah no, like the only that. other thing is stand up who else is going to come out to a fucking arena yeah and do you think there's something a little fucked up with everyone who wants to be on a stage like that like what prompts people? There are so many people in the world, billions and billions. Does everyone want it, 
or are some people like, you know, a little tweaked? I don't know. I, I don't. I think I, I always think, say for me, like I, there's like a, a evil genius part of why I want to do why I want to like love performing in front of people is like the the little bit of like the mind control you have when you whenever you act or do comedy of like I can get you to cry or laugh or change your emotion right now. You can hijack my brain. Afraid. Yeah. And it's it's like a little bit of like a, a evil genius that I love about it that that is kind of like, ooh, I like that. But also. Yeah, I guess there's, that's kind of the fucked up thing. But I don't know. I don't know if everybody that enjoys it is fucked up. But you you do see a lot of comedians that come from like fucked up backgrounds and everything. Like like I like I'll hear comedians tell their stories and I'll go, damn, I had it good. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, sometimes they stub their toe and you know they make the whole world pay for it or yeah. whatever. <laughs> like it's like what that was the whole thing or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, man, I love that. Like, I used to have this thing that I used to say is like, we live in a world with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt at the same time. Yeah. Like, that's fucking crazy yeah. that we even get to exist and in this universe. It, it, did they? Yeah. What did they do? Interview with the Vampire. Oh, that was such a good movie. Yeah. I really like that movie. What were the characters' names again? Uh, Lu- something with the, it was like Lushan or something. Some uh, like French L name that uh, Tom it's Cruise It's escaping had. me right now, but that was a great, yeah. great movie. Luchon or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Was, that was a cool one because it went all through like time and you got to see like, Yeah, they you remade know. that. Really? Yeah. I, no way it's as good. With, uh, I think the black dude from Game of Thrones, Grey Worm is the, is, oh, yeah? uh, is the Tom Cruise character, I think. Uh, I'd have to see it, but I'd have a, a hard time believing it was as good as the first one. Mm, Tom Cruise that, yeah. and Brad Pitt in a movie. But yeah, man, we have some fucking characters in this world. Um, we're lucky to be, I think, a part of it. Yeah. That's the cool thing about like doing any entertainment is, um, I don't know, you just get to express kind of like your take on things, mm-hmm. your view on things. I don't know if actors have that same uh, mentality as maybe like a podcaster or I think, a comedian like i think podcasting is very similar to stand-up yeah. in that you're like this is what i see live you know that kind of shit i think actors, less scripted i think you see actors do that like the more famous ones do it when they like take political stances do you does that bother you when they take political stances not necessarily but like okay. like you you definitely know how leo feels about the world when he wins an oscar or wins an award and he's talking about climate change or or whenever they do movies about yeah. like climate change, so like like they you always definitely support see their, like the most like you know you can predict what they're going to support. Yeah, yeah, like you you can definitely see like in some actors their stance on some certain things by the roles they choose to pick or the the movies or the people they choose to work with. Um, I mean, I I think one side would say like they're incredible actors and uh, they should stick to like their lane or whatever. But my view on it is like, I just want to hear what everyone has to say. Yeah. Just tell me your opinion. Yeah. I, I want mean, to hear it. I, I have no problem with you voicing your opinion. It's just don't be a hypocrite. Don't be. Well, don't, don't be. Don't, a, and don't about, pass yourself off, off as an expert. Yeah. Don't talk about climate change and also be one of the, the leading causes of. Yeah. <laughs> like fly change. around in a private jet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right. Are you are you doing it just so you can make up for it? Or I do think all of that, about? just as a tangent, is a little bit bullshit because like as far as I can tell, climate change is just CO2 in and out of the air. You're telling me we can't manufacture a bunch of artificial trees that suck out the CO2 and print diamonds. Obviously, obviously. Like we just need it to become a problem. Threaten San Francisco. Let's melt the icebergs, raise the sea level 10 feet, make it so that we have to spend either a hundred billion dollars cleaning the air or relocating San Francisco. Then we'll solve it. We're not going to solve it a day before we have to. Yeah. That's how it works. We don't do shit before we have to. I mean, yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. Just in time delivery. That's the human way. (laughs) I, I, I guess all the people arguing against it is going like, it's arguably too late. To it's do not. It's it. not like it's a material science problem. We're going to figure it out for sure. I, I don't know. Like, I like who, who am I? I'm not a physicist, but I do know that there has never been, uh, you know, you look at like the history of humanity. Mm-hmm. It's just rife with new technology and constant progression. Mm-hmm. Some people th- think the world is about to end. I just can't see any other way. It's either going to be an apocalypse or or everything is about to get amazing. Like bread is about to be free. 
AI is going to automate everything. Yeah, UBI is going to unlock anytime. everyone's potential. I don't, I don't see that happening anytime. So I, I, I always feel like we're always on the brink of the worst of times or the best of times, but but we constantly stay in the middle. But but look at like just how much easier it is for us to live than our parents and their parents and their parents. Like if you go back three or four generations, people are farming. Yeah, yeah. yeah I. Like there's no penicillin, there's no antibiotics. People are yeah, but that's also just the technology. Like, exactly. But I, I wouldn't argue that I'm having a better time than my parents if I had if if we were had the same technology. You know what I mean? Well, sure, yeah. yeah. But like I well, but I think that your kids are going to have a better time than you because they will be the beneficiary of all the new tech. Well, yeah, just just yeah, yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to say, like, if you even out the playing field. Right, like if you, you meet in the middle or, or something like that, like would we be in the same spot, I guess? I don't know. I think, yeah, we would probably all be in the same spot. So that's a good question. Like if you take a king from history, yeah. from like uh, the 1200s or whatever, and they have like this ungodly amount of wealth and they can control vast lands and peoples. Mm -hmm. They don't have an iPhone or air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't have Uber Eats. Like fuck, yeah. If, it's if, pretty cool. If if you were to bring him in his element and bring that whole castle here today, he'd probably be bored as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, like my Netflix, but we yeah. all just like live so much better than the kings of history. Yeah. And so like that's that's the kind of like tailwind I see in technology. Yo, a fucking king of England would love to have my one bedroom apartment. Yes, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. If it has AC, compared to his fucking castle, if it has say, AC, give me that fucking TV, dog. What yeah, dude. Like for real though, they would. Um, because, uh, I just even think about like running water. Like I never think about that. Mm -hmm. I can let my water run for five days. All I got to do is pay more money or whatever, yeah. you know, like it's clean water. People die for clean water even today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we all need to be really more grateful in this world. Nietzsche, he's a philosopher. Absolutely. He said that man is an animal that walks on hind legs and is ungrateful. And I always thought that was interesting for two things. One, because we do walk on our hind legs, yeah. which is cool. And two, is that we are so ungrateful. Like we are given everything and then we just complain about like, you know, like a sliver. It's like, what? Yeah. You have the world, <laughs> you know? I just think people don't realize it, I guess. Like, well, but like they're they're in their bubbles and they don't yeah. see the things that because you only see the problems, you only see what's not working well. Yeah, you don't yeah. see the the things that are going well. Like the negatives blare out at you. Yeah. Yeah, the negatives announce themselves. Mm -hmm. The positives blend in. Yeah, yeah. I think that is what it is. So, who are your comedy influences? Like, who do you you know like I, or even or like who do you like in this world? Let's name some I names. Like in this world. Yeah. Uh, well, my comedy influence. Uh, like the guy I style my comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrice O'Neill. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Or not. I have. Okay, yeah. I love Patrice. Um, he died, right? Yeah, 2011. Years ago. Died in 2011. Um, but I, I remember, I remember just, uh, watching comedies. It was a Comedy Central or HBO. I think it was HBO. It was a HBO special, and it was like the half hour specials. And I came across his, and it, he had a joke about why he doesn't litter. Is because uh, I could be drinking a soda and then chuck it across, and it can land on some dead white woman's body. And now I'm the Shasta Cola rapist because I'm lazy. <laughs> I was like, "That's the greatest joke." Oh, I've that's ever a great heard. joke. And and then I didn't really discover him again until he died, and they replayed his special, "Elephant in the Room," which is the greatest comedy special ever. Like it's so damn. I've never good. seen it. It's so it's so good. I think it's on YouTube for free. You can just watch it. It's an hour, and it's just him in the pocket just his style is so conversational like everything he says makes it seem like he just made it up there on the spot like the way he talks to the audience the way he he just develops a joke on the spot and that's that's kind of how i do my comedy is i just everything i do it makes it seem like i just oh it just just popped in right there even though it's the exact same way every night but it's just watch just watching that special just uh, it's so great so many great jokes i gotta that, i gotta see more of his stuff because i always hear about him yeah, and yeah. he must be a legend if people are still talking about him 10 yeah, years yeah. later i mean he's so damn good so damn good hey, uh, cool. probably every comic will like bring him up and be like yeah he's he was special yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah. other other like influences i mean Chappelle, of course yeah. uh the Chappelle show was like he's a muslim yeah, he was. He or he is. Yeah. yeah. He uh his Chappelle show was like so influential to I think everybody. 
You know, I never saw it. Really? Yeah, it wasn't on Ooh. cable TV or whatever Dude, I had. Yeah, you were missing out. Yeah. It's so damn great. I know his character. Like, I can see like he had like a really high pitched voice. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, but I never saw it, too much of it. It was just so because it, it was it was my version of like uh, uh, living in Living Color back in the day, which is another sketch show, uh, another black sketch show. Which I I I was it was came on like early '90s, so I wasn't born yet. And and I only saw like syndication reruns and I would see like one or two episodes. And then when Chappelle's show came out, I was like a young kid watching that as it was airing. And I was like, oh, this is. So he's kind of got a weird story, like Chappelle? where he like, yeah, where yeah. he like walked away from all this money. And then he's like, I kind of regret it. But then he got paid well, later. I don't, I don't think he regret it. I think that's just a joke of him. saying, yeah, yeah, I right. should have stayed. But I think it was just him standing on the principle of of like. His cre- his art not being exploited yeah, in some way. Exactly. I can't remember exactly how. Yeah, because I mean, he, he talked happening. about like he did the. It was a sketch where it the was, bird revelation. I think was where he talked about this mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but but he even talked about it uh, with, in an interview with Oprah about like oh, yeah. the, the there was a sketch they did with like pixies. Like it was like a racial pixies where like you would be standing there as a black dude and a black pixie would pop up when they ask. Well, he was on a flight. He was like, "You want chicken or fish?" And he was like, I'll take the fish. And then the black pixie would pop up and be like, you know you want some chicken. <laughs> and it was like in blackface. And it was like the, all the stereotypes of race. And it was like a... Oh, uh, shit. And it was an Asian... Oh, that was, it was an Asian guy who he's at a party. And they go, hi, guy. There's, uh, this, uh, this is, I want to introduce you to my friend. This is Lala. And, he, and then he's like hello and he's like hi and then the pixie pumps up say your name <laughs> and it's just like an asian dude trying to say l's and it's like the stereotypes and 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 he said he was doing the sketch and as he was sitting there in blackface somebody laughed at him as he did a joke but the way they laughed it was like hateful it, it was it was like i'm not laughing with you i'm laughing at mm-hmm. you a black man in his blackface and he was like yeah i can't or i don't know if it was blackface or white it was it was one of the it was something just wrong right it yeah, was something that could feel it bothered him as, yeah, a, as yeah, a black yeah. person so he was like yeah this isn't it like i, I don't feel comfortable anymore doing this and and, and i kind of like as a black comic in this in this white city again right so there's certain jokes that i'll tell on stage and i'll i'll say a certain part and then i'll i'll hear them laugh and I'll go, yeah, that wasn't the the funny part, right there, right? Like I'll I'll maybe say nigga or or something about something else, and they'll laugh there. And I'm like, yeah, that wasn't the joke, but you know, thanks for laughing anyway. You know what I mean? Sometimes I think though people will like laugh at like something wrong, or like sometimes a comedian will get you to, like say something really wrong because they'll like you'll be following along. Mm-hmm. That's the thing is like you you know like they'll say like fuck the police. Well, I don't want to think that or say that ever. I don't believe that for a second. But you can get me to kind of say that if I've given you control over my mind yeah. and you're driving. You know, like that's the power of comedy is yeah. you really do hand over your mind. What other art forms do you hand over your mind like that? Well, you definitely do in a movie. You put yourself in the character in a movie. Oh, as the performer or as the, th- as the audience member? Well, definitely both. So there was this study a long time ago. I found this out. I can't remember what the reference is, but they did a bunch of brain imaging mm-hmm. and it was uh, people doing golf and it was somebody who was actually playing golf and mm-hmm. pretty sure it was golf. They were playing golf. Another person was watching uh, somebody play golf. And the third person was thinking of playing golf. Mm. And all the same circuits lit up. And it was like I connected it to porn back in those days where I was like, (laughs) you might want to be careful about what the inputs going into your mind. Because like you're going to activate things as if you're really doing them. Okay. Yeah. And so that was kind of like... um, something that always impressed me was how all of our minds are networked and wired the same way so that if we just watch somebody doing something on a screen, Mm -hmm. it's almost as if we're doing that same thing ourselves and we kind of retain an echo of it. Yeah. So you got to kind of be careful about your inputs. Yeah. Like what you let into your mind. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that works for somebody thinking about watching golf. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, thinking of watching golf. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. If it goes even deeper. Like, <laughs> yeah, if shit. it's like the fourth level of Inception. Yeah. No, but thinking of golf, it does. Yeah, that's that's so crazy. It is fucking crazy. That's a, that's that's like in acting where you see like actors uh, like go overboard with with their roles and and like they do the method thing and then they just and they get consumed by it a yeah, little bit. I think that they take I, it on. Like I when I was acting, I would hear people be like, "That's stupid." 
And because I was like, I was one of those. I was like, oh, I want to, I want to be in the role. I want to be. Here. Can you tell us how to act? I've always wondered if I'd be. Good I, it's, it. it's about circumstances. It's uh, how do I, um, if I get a role of, about a, a lawyer and he just found out his wife is cheating on him, and he's got a scene where he has to cry. I, I've never been married. I've never been a lawyer, so I can't connect to that. What I can't connect to is. Maybe I have cried at something. Oh, okay. Well, what did I cry at? Okay, maybe my dog died, and I was really sad. So, okay, let's connect to that feeling of how I felt when my dog died, and connected to this guy getting cheated on. Kind of bring that same emotion. And so, the best acting would come if it mirrors your real experience. Yeah, you always bring like your real experiences into it, and, and like that. That's that's kind of like the basis of it. So, a way to challenge an actor would be to tell them to act in a way that is obviously different than anything they would have ever experienced and they would have a harder time with yeah that. well then they, you'll have to do some like research but it's it's also like and like, then and, and that by research you mean you would see what, how other people's have performed that role and or, try or, to incorporate that yeah or just you know look at other people's experiences and and like yeah. how they react to things it's just it's like studying people i guess and just figuring out um and just it, just figuring out how can i relate to this the best right i may have never gotten cheated on but i know what it's like to cry right? right. so so if I have to cry in a scene, all right, let's kind of bring that emotion to where I know I can build it up if I really love my dog, right? So, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a. So some people shit on actors and they say like we tout these celebrities as heroes mm -hmm. instead of like the local heroes of like firefighters yeah. or policemen or I, I think people in the military. Yeah, I think um, I think actors they can get a little full of themselves. Yeah, I think I think. I think they get a lot of praise for just, you know, acting. And I'm thinking like, I, cause I mean, when you watch the Oscars or all these award ceremonies and you see them up there and it's like congratulating themselves. Yeah. Thanking they're just God. celebrating themselves, jacking yeah. each other off. And it's like, yeah, all right, yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. It's and a as, giant as somebody jerk. that was an actor, those I was award like, shows, they're giant circle jerk. Yeah. But as somebody that was an actor, I was like, Oh, I would love to be a part of that. Even would you, even still, like I would love if I got nominated for an Oscar, dude, a fuck yeah, I'll go. I'll, yeah. I guess I would too. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but <laughs> it's the Oscars, <laughs> but it's also like none of this shit matters at the end of the day, but, it, and, but people and, tune in. Yeah, people tune in, but like at the end of the day, like these movies don't really sell that well. Yeah. Nobody's really watching these movies like that. Like, it, are they not? I don't know. No, no. Like, if you what won the best movie last? Like, like if you just look up like the the best movie winners and look up how much they made on the box office, you'll be like, damn, I thought these movies would make a lot more. Like, as if 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 they were to give out awards on box box office, none of these movies would be nominated. Hmm. So you know. But yeah, like what movies make the most money? That's the a good question. Marvels and all them, all those movies, and they're never going to get nominated. Those are candy. Yeah, yeah, they're just candy. Those are just filler. Uh, are they kind of filler? Um, now they feel like it. Yeah, they're kind of pumping the Honestly. franchise. Yeah, yeah. Like, and Marvel has a bad problem with like sequels. Like all of them yeah. are they're just not. They're just not good. Yeah, I tried to watch Wakanda forever. It was yeah. like, all right, that was enough Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, that was all about grieving. Was it? Yeah, it was all, all right. about Chadwick's death. It was just. <laughs> This oh yeah, that guy died. Well, yeah. How did he die? Uh, Suddenly, right? It was uh, a heart attack uh, or something? No, it was cancer. Oh yeah, yeah. he Whoa, had shit. Um, prostate cancer, I think. Whoa. Yeah. Wasn't he young? Yeah, yeah, really young, like thirty in his mid thirties. Jeez. 30, Thirty-eight maybe. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like car accident type of. No, deal. it was it was uh, some type of cancer. Yeah, pancreatic or prostate. One of the, one of the two. Yeah. Who else do you like in this world? Not comedians, um, actors, or comedians. Whatever. Who do you like? Who are we lucky to be alive with today? Who are we lucky to be alive with today? Lupita Nyong'o, Doug. Oh, tell me I about her. I love Lupita. Or him. I don't know. Lupita, Lupita. from uh, Wakanda Forever. The, the, she's in Wakanda Forever. Is she like the main science girl? No, that's doing she all the... was the one that was with Chadwick. Uh, she remember. had the dreads. Uh, what are the movies? I just watched Wakanda Forever. She, what was, what, who was she in She that? was, uh, what was her name? In that movie, damn it! Um, hold on, uh, it's not Zuri. She, it was she wasn't like the main character, though. No, she was the one that had the son at the end. Did you see the whole movie? Yeah, she had the son at the end, where the queen mother was a little went, high. Where the queen, where Angela Bassett, the queen, uh, was like, "I gotta go find. I, I gotta go to Mexico." And then she ran into the black chick. Oh shit! Maybe I didn't finish That's, the movie. No, she, <laughs> I don't think I finished the movie. Now that you mention it. But it was a lot about grieving. Yeah, let's see what she looks like. Have you seen Us? 
Uh, no, I, I hear about it on HBO. Oh, wait, no, that's The Last of Us. What's Us? Uh, the uh, Jordan Peele movie. Oh, she's the general. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. she's not the general. She's the, she was, she, she's, the general is, uh, I forget her name, but Lupita was uh, in love with T'Challa, Chadwick's character, before he died. Okay. And then she had a son uh, later on in the movie. But uh, she's cool. fantastic. Yeah? She's so goddamn good. Really? Uh, yeah. She's a I haven't seen great actress. That's cool. Um, who else? Uh, I think, um, I think we're lucky to have, uh, could we appreciate Christopher Nolan some more? Yeah. I absolutely. love Christopher, I love Christopher Nolan. Nolan and I, I love the old guy. What's the old guy in all of his movies? He's Michael Caine? such a good, yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think so. He's such Reason a good actor. B. Alfred. Yeah. My, Michael Caine. Yeah. So yeah. freaking good. <laughs> Uh, all those bloody push-ups, you can't even lift a bloody log. Yeah. 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 Uh, have you ever seen Memento? Oh, I, I love that movie. I, I watched it for the first time over the summer. That one has year. Christian Bell as well, right? Or no, Who is the no. main character uh, in that? Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce. Yeah. yeah. I watched it for the first time over the summer. It was fantastic. Dude, that's a great movie. That's yeah. kind of a fucked up idea yeah. where you like are trying to avenge your wife's murder and you're like have to write everything down because you forget at the end of the day. But also the way the stories, I love stories that are told like weird like out of order that's why i love yeah pulp fiction is one of my favorite movies oh it's such a good movie dude quentin tarantino we gotta appreciate Fantastic. him yeah, yeah holy shit uh he's making one more I'm, movie i yeah. think that's bullshit he should make as many movies as he possibly can well i think he's flop. i think he's gonna make uh one more movie and then he said he's trying to write a tv show yeah well maybe that'd be cool which but like be great which i hope it's the vega brothers i just hate this idea that like you're gonna have like some perfect canon and like it's like i'm gonna i, I don't want to have that. a flop really i, love I want as much from people as i can get like my favorite creators i want them to be pumping out content as much as possible i love it because i i, I feel like it just puts a bow on a nice body of work it's nice that's yeah. true other you, than other than it's like it's just a different way of doing it yeah other than death being the bow just you know yeah it'd be like yeah this is this is my body of work as a film director all 10 films rap beautifully none of them bad all fucking all great all, all fucking different all fucking unique all yeah. fucking original and just just enjoy that shit and i think i think it's great and if he ever wants to do another one then cool but i think i think he'll continue to write movies i just think he'll, he's done directing i think writing is more of his passion anyway hmm. than directing because I, I feel like did he write all those movies yeah holy shit yeah really he wrote I guess I did know that because he writes. Yeah, wrote or co wrote them. Yeah, he writes these with specific people in mind. That you know, this whole entertainment business yeah. it's interesting. Like, like the way he wrote it, uh, "Once Upon a Time in Hollywood." He he wrote like a he wrote he like the he wrote like the 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 history of the Hollywood the the Manson murders right yeah. and the the actors and everybody associated with it and then he wrote two fake individuals. With entire backstories yeah. and entire lives and entire connected in the way he wanted it to happen into this real life situation. That's and so then, cool. And then said they they fucking saved Sharon Tate. I love that. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he's a good one. He's a good one. Uh, back to Nolan. Nolan has a movie. Um, oh shit, what is it called? It's with Al Pacino and Robin Williams. Robin Williams? Insomnia. Have you ever seen it? Whoa, no. It's I think it's Nolan's. Oh wait, Insomnia. Robin Williams is kind of a creepy photographer bad guy? No. Oh. That's that no, 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 no. He's uh it's it's uh Robin Williams um and Al Pacino. I think it's I Nolan's like Al Pacino. I think it's Nolan's first film, like first big film. New Nolan. I'll have yeah. to check that out. But it's uh Al Pacino plays a cop and he I th it's in Alaska at a time where like there's no uh, there's no um, nighttime. It's all sunlight. Oh yeah, the white. And nights. it's called insomnia because Al Pacino's character accidentally kills somebody, and I believe Robin Williams sees him does it, do it, and Robin Williams is a bad guy, and he's like he's and he's like I know what you did. And you're trying to get me and it's like this back and forth like uh catch me if you can Dude, type of thing. i've definitely never yeah. seen that it's really good it's i'll have really to check good. that out for sure yeah he's kind of a sad story Who? robin williams yeah he's so beloved yeah and it just shows you like again it comes back to like is there some kind of mental illness that draws people into entertainment i don't know yeah i mean I he, he was also like didn't he have uh 
like early uh, Alzheimer's, didn't he? Oh yeah, that was another thing I heard is that he had some kind of terminal disease, yeah. and he was kind of like taking the power in that way. Yeah, so so it was like a. What do you think of Michael Lair? Uh, I didn't. I didn't know him. I, I didn't know him either. I, I only I heard about him, him through the uh, community. Yeah, or through whatever. the community. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, seemed like a great guy, but I don't, I've never. I only I've know him through Kill reaction. Tony show and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I haven't. I haven't been on Kill Tony yet. I haven't. Yeah. Have you out. Have you gone in the bullpen? No, not yet. Not yet. You haven't even tried. No. It's oh, uh, don't try. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's a lottery as long as you got a special ticket. Yeah, if you I, get a uh, golden ticket, then it works. <laughs> no, I um. I'll do it eventually. I just, I, you think so? Yeah, my my whole like introduction to Kill Tony was like a turn off because it was, it, it seemed like it was just him shitting on new comics, and uh, just the idea of of being in a bullpen and then like and then seeing all right up up to the stage this one this guy I'll select that one yeah but like but but like the the visual of all right coming to the stage this comic over here and then i'm in the back like oh i know that guy and just clapping and it is and like, kind of fun i, don't, I guess i don't i don't want to be in the bullpen yeah and, and like i don't you know it's uh, for me for me a lot of the way i operate in comedy is like optics yeah like uh, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot hey, of he things put that together I a great do. show he could do whatever the fuck he wants right yeah like there are a lot of things that i won't do like if i started comedy around the same time as somebody and and they've seen me multiple times and they're running a showcase and they don't ask me to be on a show i'm never gonna ask to be on that show yeah right. i feel like i shouldn't have to right you want to be invited at a certain point yeah like especially if, if we've if we've been uh, over in the same together, yeah we've been on the same shows yeah. together yeah like I, I shouldn't have to beg for spots from certain people like there, totally. there are certain people i would definitely ask uh, for time from but like yeah i'm not i'm not but then maybe just sometimes like asking for something you'll get it you know like, Definitely, but I've also asked those people, and they and they gave me the whole, uh, well, da, yeah. blah blah, and yeah. it's just like well, anything other than a yes is yeah. like, like I've I've asked people that I've I go, dude, we started together. I did a show with you where I fucking crushed in front of people, and it's and it's the whole like tit for tat thing where it's like, yeah, well, I have a show that, and I'm trying to get booked on stages, and they have a show, and they run good shows, and I and I got to book them in order to get on their show. Yeah, and I don't want to operate like that, and that's one of the reasons why I'm uh, I'm producing my first show uh, next month, March 11th. I don't know if this will be oh, out yeah. in time for then, but uh, but I'm producing my first comedy show, and I don't want to, but I kind of have to in order to get more stage time. And it's kind of I like think it's that. a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's like I don't. I just want to. I just want to be funny and be on stage. I don't want to have to. I don't want the stress of having to produce a show, I having to sell mean, tickets, having to book comics, having to pay the comics, having to do lights, having to do sounds. I, I just want to be on stage and be funny for ten minutes and then get off and get paid. Yeah, that would be the perfect world. Yeah. But I think you have to grind to get there. Yeah, and but you even have to... but even with the grind, I, it's you have to grind and produce. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's even more grinding it's like it is it is you have to do the grind of actually doing the like material yeah and the grind of putting on the show yeah and i'm like i'm only two years into comedy i feel like i shouldn't have to like I, i'm two years into like my, my whole thought of why it took me so long to produce a show when everybody was telling me like a year ago that you just produce your own thing i'm like i'm, yeah. I'm only a year two years yeah. in I'm still a toddler, dude. Let me yeah. let me learn how to walk first. Now yeah. you want me to fucking fly a plane, yeah. and I'm just started. Like, like that's the that's the weirdness to me with with the comedy game because you can you can be six months in the comedy and I feel like the whole comedy game is disorganized and it's run by comedians. Yeah. So obviously, it's a little bit of a yeah. shit show. Well, well, that that's a good thing and that's a bad thing because if if it wasn't run by comedians, it would be run by like gatekeepers. But the comedians are the gatekeepers and you have all of these like, you know, it just becomes like any other social thing where who do you know? What are they willing to do for you? Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't even matter. Yeah. yeah. Like the point is you can get really good at doing something, but it can be hard to get really good at doing comedy because that requires access to an audience (laughs) as a very guarded resource. But but at least with the comedians being the gatekeepers, I can I can look at that person and be like, okay, at least they're funnier than me or at least they are. You can definitely tell when somebody has. Yeah, at least they are funny or in some way that I can respond respect with like certain gatekeepers oh i see what you're saying if you're totally. just if you're just hold me off a show because you don't think i'm funny but you don't do comedy at all who the fuck are you yeah right yeah so that, that's to me where like the the difference is that's that. a good point yeah so how do you think the scene will evolve here in austin i think it's blossoming i think it, yeah i think too. once rogan's club opens yep. up 
uh, Camp City just opened back up. Yep. Like, uh, last we'll get year. more clubs. We'll get. Yeah. Uh, I think more it'll clubs, be more comedians. A scene. Um, burgeoning. I think burgeoning it'll. Scene. I think it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be a, a good like bloom of a of a of a scene. But yeah. I've also I also think it's gonna get really cutthroat at a certain point. Really. When everybody moves here, when Rogan's Club opens up and we see all the talent that's going to come from that, I think at a certain point we're going to, people will start, will start like. It's amazing how much influence he has. Yeah. I mean, he's had a tremendous yeah. influence on me. I think. All, I mean, all the people that moved here because of Rogan, when he moved here, well, there was like an influx. I don't think any com. I, I can't. I don't know. I don't five think comics from, from Austin here. Yeah, no, like he is an attractor yeah. for sure. But what do you think it is that, what do you think is special about Joe Rogan? Um, well, for one, he's a great comedian. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen his stand up, but he's. Oh, his style he's, is. He's fantastic. It just yeah. melts into your mind. Like um, it's such a easy. Yeah. And I just think the fact that he's, he's like one of the first podcasts for being honest. Like the Joe Rogan podcast has been around forever. Forever. Uh, like since YouTube started, like it, like he's been doing it forever, and I think it's just the longevity and him being a great comic. But it's like I, he also has this way of communicating that is unique, and it's like part of his comedy and part of his co- podcast. Yeah, yeah, I, and uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't. It's almost like illustrative, like all of his. I, I don't want to like go too far in a fanboy tangent or whatever, mm-hmm. but there is like this effect that he seems to have. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know if it's because I don't really watch his podcast really? unless I, I know the guest or if I like the guest. I watch everything he does. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna watch his podcast if I don't know the guest because I'm like, I like Joe, but the Joe Rogan podcast isn't a isn't him doing a podcast with the scientist isn't an appeal to me. Okay, those are like my favorite ones. But him doing a podcast with another comedian or an actor that I like or a musician that I like, yeah, I'll tune in. Um, because because I feel like I'll have fun there. I don't I don't I don't listen to podcasts to like learn about fucking aliens and UFOs. You know what I mean? I, I want to sit back and enjoy myself and like they're total and hangs. Shit. Yeah, they're yeah. total hangs. Yeah, and I'm and, and I've heard like conversations he's had with certain people, like little clips where I'm like, oh, that's fun, that's funny, or whatever. But I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I, I enjoy his comedy. A he's lot more one that we're lucky to be alive at yeah. the same time as him for Absolutely. sure. Yeah. Yeah, man, we are lucky to be in the scene, being a part of it. Like, it's funny to shit on things, but I think that, like, it's going to be a great, bright future. Absolutely. We're lucky to be here. Absolutely. All right, Daniel West, thank you so much for spending time with me and letting thank me interrogate you, you. I think we got, like, some cool people uh, called out that we're yeah. lucky to be around. Absolutely. Actors, anyone else we want to call out before we close that we um, love? Uh, Denzel Washington. We Denzel. Said him. Denzel. Uh, uh, Kendrick Lamar is a great rapper who's fantastic. No. Uh, Thundercat. Thundercat. Have you ever heard of Thundercat? I'm gonna have to. Oh, wait, is that a musician? I yes. think I've heard their music. Yeah. yeah. They do like EDM Thundercat or something. Thundercat is. That should have been my first answer. Thundercat is fantastic. Yeah, he's a bass player who played most of the bass on Kendrick Lamar's second album, To Pimper Butterfly, which is how I found out about him. And then I just I was like, who the fuck is Thundercat? This is a weird name. And I just discovered that he's like one of just the, the like this is the most chill music that you would ever listen to. It's so fun. He has a song about called Dragon Ball Do-Rag, yeah. where, where he just sings to a girl saying, hey girl, how do I look in this do-rag? Yeah. Can you tie it for me? It's so goddamn good. It's so fucking great. And uh, yeah, everybody go check that shit out. Check that shit out. Everyone cool, move to Austin. This is the place. It's going to be a good time. All right. Thanks, Daniel West. Uh, Instagram. Uh, You can follow me at Sir D West. Uh, Follow my podcast at Two Naps Show. Um, Yeah, all my shit is there. You can, any show I'm doing, any clips that I have, like them, share them, uh, comment on them. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya.